Hi students. I've had a number of questions on the MEE 380 project, so I'd like to do a quick tutorial of what I'm looking for and how you can efficiently get parts off the Glowforge. Let's say that you've, your project looks like the one on the screen. So we've got four blades to cut. We're going to cut the tower out of four pieces of plexi, and we've got two pieces of plexi in the tail of our little windmill. Okay, what I'd like you to do is first create a layout with all the parts laid out flat. So we're going to create a new assembly. And we're going to bring all the proper number of components in. And we're just going to lay them out flat. So I'm going to bring in a piece of the tail. I will bring in a piece of the tower base. And I'll bring in a blade. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to float the tail piece so I can move it around. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch over here on my assembly uh, planes and axes. So I'm going to click on sketch. I'm going to choose the front plane. And I'm doing this just to have a visual reference for how big the Glowforge table is. It's not going to appear on on the print, uh, but it will just let me know when I've gone out of bounds. So it's 20 inches wide, it's 12 inches tall. Now I can get out of my sketch, my reference remains, and I'm going to get rid of a bunch of these planes and axes and stop cluttering up the view. We'll get rid of the axes, get rid of the planes, and we'll get rid of the origins. Perfect. I'll hit the space bar and I'm going to orient. There we go. So now I have my Glowforge table and I can drag my pieces over. As you're doing this, I want you to try to avoid this area down in here. It may not be possible but try to. SolidWorks is going to put there for academic use only text right there. I can certainly get rid of that in the Glowforge software, um, but if I can simply put a box around it, it makes it much easier. Okay, so I've got all the unique parts on, on the screen that I need, but I don't have the proper quantities. So let's now make the proper quantities. So for example, in the tower base, I'm hitting control C and control V. That puts another one right on top. Okay, I think what I want to do is I want to try and interlock these to get as much space used as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate these. I'm going to come over and I will rotate the component. I could mate them and go through all of that, but there's really no need. So I'm going to rotate it about an entity and I'm going to choose this corner as, <coughs> excuse me, as an axle pin. So I'm going to rotate that up. Let's say OK. I'll drag this piece down. That looks pretty good. So now I need two more of those tower bases. So I'm going to do a click and a control click. I'm going to do a control C and a control V. And hopefully 
I have two more of exactly the same orientation, which I do. I would encourage you to keep between an eighth and a quarter of an inch between the parts just so they don't melt back together when the laser goes over a second time. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's try and go vertical with these blades. So I want to rotate this one 90 degrees. Again, I'm going to rotate about that corner as an axle pin. Go. See how that looks from the front. The back edge looks nicely vertical. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, so I'm going to need another one. Again, control C, control V. Now I have a second one. This time I'm going to flip this one 180 degrees. Tuck this one right in here. And I'm going to do just like I did with the tower pieces. Control C and Control V to make a copy. I'll drag that down. And again, Control C, Control V to make another copy. Pretty tight, but it doesn't look too bad. Okay. So this one, I think I want to try rotating 45 degrees and see if that'll fit in there. Again, we're going to do a rotate component. Try that. Just barely fits. Do another copy. Okay, I've got the required number of parts all fitting in my 20 by 12 region. Now we need to make a one-to-one -one scale PDF of this. So we're going to say, first off, we're going to save it. And I called it Flat Pattern Assembly 2 just because I have a version from when I was practicing to make this video. And we'll say File, Make Drawing from Assembly. I'll choose my drawing template. Okay, we got to clean up a bunch of stuff. So I'm just clicking on the views and then pressing Delete to delete the views. I don't need sheet 2, so I'll delete that. I don't need the format, so I'll delete that. And I'm going to change the sheet scale to 1 to 1. 
and I'm also going to make the paper 20 by 12 so it matches the Glowforge. So if I come up to sheet 1, I'll go down to properties, we'll do a custom sheet size. The width will be 20, the height will be 12, and we'll say apply. Put all of our lines on the piece of paper. There we go. And we'll say file, save as. It wants us to save it first. That's fine, we'll do that. And then we'll do our save as again, but this time we're going to come down and we're going to choose PDF format. So it says Flat Pattern Assembly 2, PDF. We'll hit Save. And this is the note that I was warning you about right here. Okay, I can take that off in the Glowforge software, but if you have the option to avoid that area, it does make it easier. Okay, this I can pull directly into the Glowforge and cut directly from it. The thing to remember is all of the lines must be one-to-one -one scale, um, and we do not want to have any format, any border, no center marks, no center lines, just edges, folks. Okay, so if you bring me this, we will be very happy and I can quickly cut you some nice parts. Thanks for watching.